These days, most people carry a digital computer around everywhere they go. Your phone is a computer that fits in the palm of your hand. The first successful handheld computer was the 1996 Palm Pilot. It used a pen-based touchscreen interface and a home screen that still looks familiar in the 2020s. You could add your own chosen apps, and yes, that includes games. The main inventor of the Palm Pilot was a character called Jeff Hawkins. He took time out from studying brain science to invent the world's first useful personal digital assistant, or PDA. He did this by realising that to be successful, he was not competing with computers or laptops. He saw that his main competitor was a much more ancient technology called paper. Thanks to his radical new handwriting recognition software, the Palm Pilot became wildly popular. Over the next two years, several new models were released. Some had various upgrades, including memory expansion and updated software. Microsoft had noticed what was happening with the success of PDAs. They released Windows CE and partnered with various hardware manufacturers to build even more powerful handhelds than the Palm models. As this new competition was growing, Jeff Hawkins did something shocking. In 1999, he released the Palm 5, a new flagship model without adding any new functions or upgrades. It had the same 16 MHz CPU from the original Palm Pilot that was released three years earlier. This new Palm instead had a sleek new metallic design. He wanted the Palm 5 to be more like a piece of jewellery and it turned out to be a beautiful and highly desired piece of technology. The Palm Pilot was successful because it had a killer app. The pen-based handwriting recognition worked so well it could displace paper. Also, the Palm was designed around data synchronization with your computer. It came with all the desktop software needed to make it highly functional. Most importantly, it just worked without being overly complex. It did all this with only a 160 by 160 pixel black and white screen, a 16 MHz CPU, and 128K of memory in the very first model. Palm made their design philosophy clear in a document called The Zen of Palm. Later, Apple would adopt a very similar simplistic design philosophy in many of their products, including the first iPhone. The Palm I have here is actually a second revision of that first generation series. This unit has a larger one megabyte of memory and includes a backlight under the screen, which the very first Palm Pilot didn't have. After the first generation series of Palm devices came the Palm 3, with upgrades such as more memory and the first attempts at wireless communication. These Palm 3 clips are from the YouTube channel Retrograde Scene, I kind of prefer the original boxy palm with wavy bottom design over the more tapered design of the Palm 3. But nothing else comes close to the beautiful Palm 5. Here is my original Palm 5. I took it apart a long time ago and the glue I used to put it back together is obviously not the best and it's sort of fallen apart over time. This, however, does give us the opportunity to have a look inside at all the components. So first we'll have a look at the main board. It's only really got three main chips with some support chips around the place. The other side, almost nothing, just a few resistors. The reason this main board is so simple is thanks to the main CPU, which is a Motorola Dragon Ball, named after the Japanese anime of the same name. The Dragon Ball is actually a Motorola 68000 at its heart. This is the same CPU that was used in the Commodore Amiga and Apple Macintosh computers 10 years earlier. The Dragon Ball was designed with expanded functions in this small low power package that made it ideal for use in a handheld computer. It includes extra functions like a real-time clock, a display controller and touchscreen interface, flash memory controller functions, it controls the serial port, and it has simple audio output. Speaking of flash memory, there's the flash memory chip right there, and that's 2 megabytes, and that's where the Palm operating system is stalled. 
no user data or user applications are stored in flash on these devices instead there's the main memory chip and the whole unit has just a really simple design so the frame is plastic and onto the frame was glued the aluminium front and back the liquid crystal display looks like it was made by Epson and for a backlight you can barely see it because it's so thin it uses an electroluminescent panel which is something that was used a lot in the 80s and 90s but really hasn't been used much since then the advantage of electroluminescence is that it's really thin and doesn't use very much power one of the disadvantages is that they were relatively dim though they did work well enough I've got an example of a electroluminescent panel here to give you an idea of just how thin they are and they work by inputting an AC current and so between the potential on the top and the bottom the phosphorescent layer would glow I can actually demonstrate that here with this one I've got a little inverter here to output the necessary AC current and I'll plug that into this panel so with the lights off I'll power up the panel and there we go so the panel emits a high frequency tone from the AC current and these were pretty much superseded when LEDs became bright enough that you wouldn't need this sort of technology anymore now before moving on to the next part I want to mention that this memory chip is the reason I took this Palm 5 apart. When the Palm 5 first came out, they were about $500, which was rather expensive. But six months later, Palm brought out another model, the Palm 5X, which included 8 megabytes of memory instead of the original two, and a slightly faster CPU as well. But mostly it was the memory that really made it worthwhile. And that meant that the second-hand price of the original Palm 5s did drop, so I bought this second hand and what I did was I replaced this memory chip with an 8 megabyte chip and I remember some of the resistors on the back had to be changed to tell the palm that it had an 8 megabytes instead of 2 but it pretty much worked flawlessly so you could find these chips on old computer memory at the time get an 8 megabyte one and just solder it in place and upgrade your palm that way I do want to put this back together but I also decided it was time to upgrade to something I always wanted. Here's my Palm 5X, 
and it's really nice. The aluminium finish is gorgeous. This is a very premium product indeed. The front flap is real leather and this comes with the unit when you buy it. There's the stylus and the flap can also be removed and the channel is just the right size for another stylus so you can even go left-handed if you want to really nice product design and the unit is now working so we'll have a better look at that screen once I can get the lighting set up Palm designed and marketed the 5 Series as a real luxury item if we have a look at the accessory catalogue that comes in the box we can really see what they were aiming at first page really nice genuine leather wallet carry your cards and your palm all together and this is a palm branded accessory they stamp their logo right into the leather they also brought out a much larger deluxe carry case as well carry your cards some notepad and a pen even some cash comes with straps so you can carry it on your shoulder if you want Next up, a hard case made out of aluminium to really protect your palm. An optional stylus that also works as a pen as well. And if you wanted a belt clip, you could get a genuine leather carry case on your belt as well. And some flip cases in different styles if you wanted to change the look of your palm. And towards the end we get to other accessories like a spare cradle and charger. There's a travel charger and cradle. Also in the box came a graffiti reference card so you can learn the handwriting system on the go. And once you've learnt this system it was really fast to enter text. Showing all the different symbols and way to draw them to get the palm to recognise them. Alright, I'm going to see if I can take this thing apart and get a new battery in there. So they're really ahead of their time in terms of making electronics with a battery inside that's all sealed up with glue. And that seam is really tight. I cannot even get a blade in there. can even see a bit of the original glue right here. So I'm going to have to soften that up with some heat and see if we can get it apart. Okay, that's pretty hot. Oh, I can barely touch that. Let's see what happens when I get a blade in there now. It's a little bit looser. Okay, I've got a gap forming. There you go, you can see it forming. I can get the blade in there. And there's the glue starting to starting to flex, but the unit's cooled down a bit and the glue is certainly getting a lot harder. So while that's there, I might give it a bit more heat. Okay, yeah it's definitely a lot softer when it's too hot to touch, that's really great, what a great design, oh, alright I'll just get a spacer in there, oh, oh that's so hot, at least I know the glue is soft, when I can't touch it. Right, it's starting to cool down and so the glue is going pretty hard again. All right. Let's 
to get some more heat going. Yeah, so when it's hot, it just gets so soft. Right, almost there. Okay, done. A glued in battery. So I do have a replacement battery. It's not an original palm battery. It's a more modern replacement, same capacity and it doesn't have a connector on it so I'm going to have to do a bit of soldering what is this soldering or what okay all right we have the connector now let's have a look Okay, that's more or less done. Let's do a quick test and see what happens. Yep, there we go. It's powering up. So that battery looks like it fits really well. I'm going to glue the back back onto it now. And the glue I'm going to use this time is some um, B7000. Have a look at the box, and it is a surprise adhesive force. This was a great adhesive, best selling Europe and America, mad fans around the world. Okay, gravity magnetic rubber. It's waterproof, stimulate the taste free, anti vibration, flexible, a hint of scent, and paintable. That looks like the sort of thing I probably want. There's the glue. Uh, I'm not sure that it's stimulating the taste free. Maybe it is. So I'm going to glue this all together and we'll see what we've got. I think I've learned a lot about glue since my first Palm 5. One last thing before I load software onto this is palms come with a reset hole because third party apps can crash the system and make it unresponsive. So this is probably a good time to get the stylus out and have a quick look. The stylus is all metal, but if I unscrew the top, it has a reset pin. Very useful. If I just press the reset button, it will restart the palm from any third party apps that may have become unresponsive. No data will be wiped when doing a warm reset. If I want to do a hard reset and wipe the palm completely, if I hold down the power button and then do a reset, wait for the logo to come on, release, and that'll give us an option to completely erase the entire palm and set it up as new. Right, with that done, let's get some software onto this thing. To load software into my palm, I'm going to use my trusty old Windows 98 laptop. I'm going to need the palm desktop software. And in the box, I did get a couple of disks. First of all, this one here, this isn't even from this palm model. There's a later palm logo, and this is a USB kit. This palm doesn't even have USB, so that's no good. That looks more like it. Palm 5X software. The only problem is the disk is nothing to do with Palm. That's okay because the software is still available online. 
Okay, I've downloaded the Palm desktop software and the apps that I want to install. So let's get this onto the computer and get them onto the Palm. Install Palm desktop software. But here is the Palm desktop software. Maximize it and date, address, to do list, memo, expenses. Don't have Excel installed, that's true. And installing apps, which is what we're going to need. Right, I do need to connect the Palm up to the computer now. And I did get the desktop cradle with the faulty charger and it does use a serial port which this computer doesn't have one built in so I'm going to forego using this method I'm going to go with the fancy modern method of using the infrared so an infrared port on this palm and this laptop also has infrared right here so we're going to go to hot sync and switch from serial to infrared okay and the infrared port is over here the mouse connector might be in the way yeah it doesn't seem to be syncing yet it's detected the infrared okay okay so yeah, we want to sync Palm 5X. All right, I'll put it right up against, and that seems to have done it. All right, so syncing is in progress. Apps are going on the Palm. This is going to take a while because it's going over infrared. So I'll leave that and we'll see what happens. Okay, that took quite a while. But it seems to have worked okay needs to be reset no worries all right so I've got a lot of software on here now and time to have a look through it Let's see what it does there we go okay I've got some software on here now and I want to have a look at some of the apps the first app I want to have a look at is called Jack Flash now normally the flash memory in palms is reserved for the operating system only what jack flash does is it enables the flash memory to be used to store third-party apps and even user data this palm is running palm os 3.5 which is about one and a half megabytes and that means there's about half a megabyte completely free in the flash which we can now use using jack flash I also remember on my Palm 5, I was able to remove some of the inbuilt apps from the flash memory and then use it for my own apps or my own data. But I don't remember how to do that and Jack Flash doesn't seem to have that function so I'm going to have to look into that further. So the app I'm moving into flash memory at the moment is a hack manager and Afterburner which is a Palm CPU overclocker. So with all that set, the flash is being written to and I'm starting to customize the operating system. Okay, setting up Afterburner, and there's uh, quite a number of options here. Uh, zero weight states is good. Fast multiplexing also helps speed up the palm. And then, of course, the CPU clock. Going through the various options, you can underclock to save battery power, but uh, I'm going to go for the maximum clock that I can, which is 37 megahertz. Now different palm units will have different abilities to overclock and some will be quite unstable. So I'm going to test this and see how stable I can get it at the maximum clock speed. There is a benchmarking program here and first I'll run the benchmark without the overclock enabled. Now the palm benchmark software lists the palm 3C as the reference point and it shows the palm 5X at 95% the speed of that. Though interestingly, this Palm 5X is 89% the speed of the reference. So I'm not sure why the discrepancy there. Anyway, switching to the overclock now and running the benchmark. 
Okay, with the afterburner overclock running, we're getting 171% the speed of the reference. So that's getting close to a doubling of the original Palm 5X. Really happy with this overclock. It's so far it seems to be fairly stable, but that will be revealed over time. Certainly it will decrease the battery life a bit, which I'm fine with. Okay, so there are a number of utility apps to try out. One is Resource Editor. So on the Palm, files are called Resources. And this app, you can control the resources and change options. So you've sort of got some low-level access to the filing system. I need to look into this further to learn a bit more about it. We'll see what happens there. One final utility I want to have a quick look at is this tweak, which adds an option to the Preferences menu to change the bit depth of the home screen. So you can go from the default black and white one bit to four shades of grey all the way up to 16 shades of grey so the reason they defaulted the home screen to just black and white one bit was so that it looked like all the previous palm models okay on to games now and I've got Tetris here and it looks pretty much exactly like the Game Boy version except a bit sparser and the gameplay is really good it plays very well it doesn't quite have that Game Boy level of engagement, but it's a decent clone of Tetris. And this is a good example of some of the games that work well on this Palm. Sort of puzzle style games. But that's not the only sort of game that you can get on this platform. Here's an excellent arcade game called Zap 2000 from Astroware. Astroware are known for making really good Palm games. And this one is no exception. I'm finding it a little bit hard to play through the camera screen here, but nonetheless, this is a really good game. Another example of a good game on the Palm is Sim City. This is an official port of the game and plays really nicely. It's a little bit easy compared to other versions of the game. So with games like this I do start to think about what some of these games would look like on a colour screen palm and as I look at more software I will be going into that in the future. Some apps will actually tell you this isn't going to work very well on a black and white screen and many newer apps won't run at all on a black and white screen. I also want to do some networking and internet over the infrared port and see what that's like on these palms. So that'll be in the future sometime. I hope you liked this video and enjoyed the experience as I have. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time for more explorations into intriguing technology.